pretty nice part about this. We just go down and do what we normally do with our equations. We get our two solutions. We check that last time to make sure they both work. And if you want to do it again, we can do it again. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2. That gives us 6. Absolute value of 6 is? That's where you come in. Is? 6. six. Good, yeah. So that, that works. If we do negative 2, 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. Plus 2 is negative 6. What's so the absolute value of negative 6? Okay. 6. So they both are solutions for us. But we have to show that with our two equations. Why don't you try one of these on your own to make sure that you can handle it, and then we'll continue. Solve that one. If you get done with this one really quickly, why don't you try another one for me? We're going to work on this one together in a second. And I'll be walking around. If you need a hand on this, let me know. Hey, this is absolute value. How many equations do you get with this absolute value problem? How many equations are you always going to get with an absolute value problem? Okay, we're going to get started on the first one here. So the first one, the way we look at this, we say, okay, absolute value equals a whole num uh, a number over here. We know that at the inside of our absolute value, 2x minus 3 equals positive 5. The absolute value of positive 5 is going to give us positive 5. That's great. This is one solution, or one equation that's going to give us one solution. The other portion of this is we also know that if the 2x minus 3 equals negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5 is going to give us positive 5. That's where we're getting these two equations out of. If we solve each of these, it's going to give us our two unique solutions. We'll plug that in to double check that it does work. This should work for us. Notice how the steps are the same. You're just adding or subtracting or dividing uh, with a, a different number on the side. So we'll have 2x equals 8 divided by 2. Hopefully you got 4 as one of your solutions. Did you get 4? The other one will add 3 just like we did before. That's negative 2. We'll divide by 2 and get negative 1. Check both of them. Make sure you have this right. I mean, these are pretty easy to check, right? You may as well go through and do that. If we check 4, we have 2 times 4 is 8. Minus 3, that's positive 5. Absolute value of positive 5 is 5. That works. Negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 3 is negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5. They both work out for you. Oh, we've got both those. Good deal. Good deal. Now, the next one, again, I just want you to get familiar with those fractions again. Make sure that when we see those, we don't just get stuck on them. The same process is going to work for us. We know that if the inside is equal to 1, absolute value of 1 is going to give us 1. That's great. The other equation, We're just going to make it equal to the negative of that number because we know that an absolute value of negative 1 is still going to give us positive 1. 
Are you starting to see why we have these two equations for absolute value every single time? Because we know that no matter what, I mean, whether you have a positive or a negative, no matter what, the absolute value is going to give us the positive version of that number. That's where this one's coming from, it's from that thought. How do we solve these? Let's find the each term by three. You could. There's, there's actually two options here. You can use what we learned in chapter 7, multiply every single term by 3, and that would work. Or you could subtract 4 first and then multiply 3. Either way that you want to do that. Uh, this one's kind of nice because you have a couple options here. How many people multiplied by 3 first? How many people subtracted 3 first? Oh, I'm sorry, subtracted 4 first. <laughs> Did you subtract three? I hope nobody subtracted three. Okay, good. Maybe I'll do one one way and one the other way so you see, you see the difference up here, okay? So first way, if you subtracted four first, you'd get x over three equals negative five. And then you could multiply both sides by three because we have x divided by three. The way you undo that is multiply. We got it, one solution. The other one, if you want to multiply by 3 first, this is the idea of using the LCD to get rid of denominators like we did from like chapter 7 stuff. If you want to do that, that's fine. You just have to make sure that you're not just doing this. That's going to give you the wrong answer. If you are going to multiply by 3, you've got to do it appropriately. That means this term, this term, but also this one right here. You cannot forget about that one. So if you want to multiply everything by 3, that still will simplify to 1. You get x plus 12 in this case equals 3. Do you guys see the difference there? Okay. And then if we subtract 12, would you get negative 9? Yes. Okay. So either way you do those, we should get the same answers. And you should check it. If we plug in negative 15, negative 15 divided by 3, how much is negative 15? How much? Negative 5 plus 4, that gives us negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. That works. If we do negative 9, negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. That also works. How many will feel pretty good about these basic absolute value equations? Good. All right. That's fantastic. Let's start looking at a couple different scenarios. <laughs> and then we'll look at the end of our, our section here. What happens if you have an absolute value equal to an absolute value? How can we do do that sort of thing. That's, that'll be the last thing we look at. So moving on. You know, before when we did this, we looked at this and said, oh, I know that if the absolute value equals a number, then the inside of that could equal either the number or the negative of that number, and we're still going to be okay because the absolute value makes it positive no matter what. Does this one look exactly like this one or this one? What's different about that one that you didn't necessarily have in these two? Do you see it? The 9 on the side of the absolute yeah, that's actually going to make a big difference for you, right? Here's what this says. When we had absolute value equal to a number, this was just the absolute value itself would make this number positive no matter what, right? It's going to equal that thing over there, whatever that number is. In this case, it says, yeah, that this absolute value, that's going to make whatever is in there positive, but then I'm adding 9 to it before I have that equal to 19. This right here can be an issue for you. What this didn't do, what this didn't explain was that if you have num another number over here, we can't just change this to plus and minus. We can't just make one this side equal to the positive 19 and this side equal to the negative 19 because that, that is going to change when I subtract 9 from, from, that, from uh, both those numbers. That's going to be a big issue for us. This doesn't make this whole side positive 19 or negative 19. It just makes this little part positive no matter what we put in there. Does that make sense to you? So the, the key here is that if we're going to solve these absolute value equations, you have to have Absolute value equals a number. That's what you have to have. It has to look like this, or it has to look like this. Once we have this number at the back end of that, that's something we have to deal with first before we set up our two equations. Are you with me, folks? So I'll make a little note up here. You need to isolate or get the absolute value by itself before you make two equations.
Isolate the absolute value before you make it into an equation. Essentially, you got to get it to look like this. It has to be absolute value equals number. And I'll show you why on this problem if you, if you want to see it. So if we're supposed to isolate this first, what do you think the first thing we're going to do is? Great, let's do that. Yeah, it's got to look like that. So if we subtract 9, then we're going to get the absolute value of 5x equals 10. That looks like what we've been dealing with the whole time. Do you guys see the difference between this one and this one? How the, this one looks the same as that, but this one does not. If we try to do the two equations from right here, here's what would happen. I'm going, to read, I'm going to put that back on the board in just a second. I just want you to see this. If I were to make up my two equations now, that'd be one of them. That'd be the other one, right? But that 9, since it's not associated with the absolute value at this point, subtracting 9 is going to really change this problem for us. Here we'd have the 10. This is going to work out either way. This one's going to be fine for us. But this one is the one that would really mess us up. If we subtract 9 here, we're going to get negative 20, what is that, negative 28? That's going to be different from what we're about to get. You see, the problem is, if I change this 19 to a negative and then subtract 9, that's different than subtracting 9 and then changing it to a negative. We know this method if I do... Five x equals ten. We know our absolute value five x equals ten. We know this method works. If we have the absolute value isolated, that's what we've been doing the whole time. This method's not going to work. If you have that negative nineteen first and then subtract nine, this number is going to be off. Remember the negative twenty-eight. When I go back to this, you're going to see that there's going to be a difference up here. So of course, yes. We subtract nine first, and we get our absolute value of five x equals 10. Okay, what now? We should know at this point. Make my, okay, so before I start doing any actual math on this problem, before I start doing any math with this problem, I do have to make my two equations out of that. We know that absolute value says that the inside is equal to the number, and the inside is equal to the negative of that number. Because absolute value will make that positive no matter what. That would not work in this case. You can't have it equal to 19 and negative 19 because absolute value is not covering that 9. That is why we had to subtract that 9 before we do the, the two equations there. Hey, can you solve these? Yeah, that's not too bad. Just divide, divide by 5. We're going to have x equals 2. Divide by 5, we'll get x equals negative 2. Let's try these just to make sure that we have this right. If I plug in 2, what's 5 times 2? Absolute 